to make the lighting work. <laughs> There we go. Here we are live. Uh, we got Josh Popper here who'll be taking on uh, Mike DiOrio in his pro debut Tuesday night, October 1st at the Troubadour Nashville, Tennessee. Josh, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. I'm, I'm excited. I've been training, been counting down the days, and I'm ready to go. It's been a long time coming for you. I know uh, uh, you uh, – well, actually, we'll, we'll get into your story. You uh, grew up in Atlantic City, the Atlantic City area, not far from where I'm sitting right now. Uh, you're a football player, and, and not just a football player. You were a, a star player at Rowan University, and for those who don't know, it's a very high-end Division three school where you excelled, and uh, you excelled to the point where you went to camp with a couple NFL teams, I believe the Arizona Cardinals and the Indianapolis Colts. So t t talk about that experience, uh, your football experience. Um, yeah, that, that, that experience was uh, – that was – surreal it was a dream come true being in the nfl um even though obviously it was very short-lived being able to put on a, a nfl team's jersey and a helmet was um a dream come true you know every little kid who, who grew up playing football has that dream and um desire to one day play in the nfl and i was blessed enough to put on two different nfl teams um that transition uh from division three football to the nfl is a it's a huge transition. And I also made a position change from defensive end to middle linebacker, not even oh, outside wow, linebacker. Okay. So um, the learning curve there is was very different. Division three playbook you have, it's all in your head. There's no actual playbook. You have seven or eight plays. You maybe add a play for a special week, but that's about it. And you get to the NFL and there's day, there's installs where you're learning 30, 40 plays per day. Mm -hmm. Each play has six or seven variations to it, depending on how the offense lines up. And then every play the offense motions and you got to control everything. So it's a it's a learning curve. It was a it was a process that I didn't actually expect to learn as much as I did in. And I'm so thankful for the opportunities from both the, the Colts and the Cardinals. And it was everything I could ever ask for. Now, it, it, I, obviously, as you're, you know, realizing a dream uh, to play in the NFL, it, it was boxing ever a thought in your mind or in terms of did you ever mess around in the gym while you while you're pursuing your NFL uh, aspirations? Um, yeah, no. So there was there was once upon a time this was way this this predated my football. I uh, was in Pleasantville Rec Center and they have a nice boxing set up there. Yes, they do. And uh, I literally was in there one day just messing around. And that was the extent of it. That was it. And uh, never once had the dream to ever pick up a boxing glove or do anything involving boxing. Um, it's actually a funny story how I got into boxing. So uh, I had finished up playing football the first year with the Colts got, I'm sorry, with the Cardinals, I um, got cut. Second year was battling some injuries. I had a torn groin, um, ended up getting cut. And um, my life kind of went on a little downward spiral. I was in a uh, state of depression. I couldn't even watch a football game without like getting mad. Mm -hmm. um, I was working a nice uh, job, working for New York Life, making like really good money for myself, uh, wearing a suit and tie to work. I thought that that's what life was all about. About two weeks after wearing a suit, I'm like, what what am I doing? This is not <laughs> me. And um, my older brother, Danny, he had went to uh, Temple University, played football there. And one of his uh, players had got, one of his teammates had got into boxing and um, was on the USA Olympic boxing team, um, the whole nine. And my brother was like, I think you should try boxing. And I'm like, "That what, boxing? No. Nah. He's like, just go try it. So I drove from Atlantic City up to New York, um, fell in love with it uh, on the first day. I was supposed to, I didn't even have a plan, but I drove back up to New York the very next day um, maybe like two, three days later of uh, going consistently every day. My mom's like, are you crazy? Like, what are you doing? And um, I just, I fell in love with it. I had a brand new car because my, the job that I was working on, everything was going like pretty good. And I hit the reset button on life. I, um, I decided to, to move up to New York. I left my car, I ended up getting repossessed. Um, that was fun trying to get that off of all of my, uh, my financial records, but yeah, so um, left my car there uh, and hit the reset button. I actually was homeless when I first came to New York. Oh, wow. I'm sleeping on yoga mats and doing anything that I need to do to make sure that I was pursuing my dreams. But and real quickly, in terms of segue from football to boxing, you know, you were, a de like you said, a rush end, a defensive end, linebacker in college. A lot of hand fighting with offensive yes. linemen. How much of, of that, you know, that you've done stuff like that all those years – 
maybe helped accelerate a little bit, you know, in terms of you using you use be able to use your hands in, in the world of boxing. Definitely. That's a that's a huge connection. So just um like range management, like as a defensive end, if we're talking about elite level defensive ends like myself. No, I'm kidding. If we're yeah. talking about, you well, know, just I mean, elite level like camp in the NFL, that is elite. So I, I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. But uh yeah, when you're when you're at that level, it's like range is everything. If you shoot as an offensive lineman, if you shoot your hands too early, then you're 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 beat already. As a defensive lineman, you want to do what you can to get them to present their hands so you can work off of it. So it's a lot of timing, a lot of range management. Um, there's a lot of finesse that goes into it. I love to you know, pass rushing is my my specialty. So I love to to bull rush, and then from there, people once you experience my power, it's like you're I put you on notice. So now after you're like, oh, I got to really brace for this power to hit you with a finesse move. So it it it's very similar to boxing. It's about you know winning the mental battle before anything else and uh, making that transition it was fun. Seeing how I could connect the dots, it was it was very fun. You know, we we might have to call the Eagles. Their defensive ends the first three games of the year they've been freaking terrible. So we we might have to, we might have to get you back in camp. Right, right. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Looking at where I am now as a as a boxer and reflecting back on my football, I know that. Football would be easier after the experience. I think all defensive linemen should definitely be involved in boxing to some capacity. It's, it's funny you say that. I used to run a gym in Philly, Johan's gym in Philly. We used to have a lot of football players come in j j just for the workout, just to, to, help, to help improve their hands and stamina and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, so not only you start falling in love with boxing, you, you have a nice am, uh, amateur career. You won, a, I guess, in New York Metro, and you won a Ringmasters Championship. So uh, you, I guess you kind of picked it up you know, pretty quickly then. Yes. Um, I have to give a lot of credit to the, to the guys around me. Um, shout out my boy, Jacob Solis. Uh, he's in, we're, we're in the same camp. Uh, mm -hmm. He fights at 165. He's 5 and 0, five knockouts. Um, we, I, I give a lot of credit to him. Uh, when I first got into boxing, uh, Jacob was around. And obviously, there's a huge weight gap. I'm 230 pounds. Right now, I'm down about 220. But at the time, I was about 230, maybe a little bit higher. And Jacob was around 160, 165. Um, Jacob was my first sparring partner. So uh, to one for him to allow me to throw punches at him when I'm still learning how to pull my punches and everything, one, I'm giving him credit for that. But uh, just being around the, the group of guys that I was around, Dustin Enriquez was my mentor when I first got started. Dustin Enriquez uh, fought on the USA Olympic boxing team as well. Um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was great because the way that they, I was introduced to it was definitely tough love, but I was used to that, being an athlete. Um, the way like Dustin would would teach me things, teach me how to coach and teach me how to box, he would make me earn it. I would have to earn the right to learn from him. Um, and that was such a beautiful process because there was other people that were going through that same process with me. And to see them like I was the last one standing. Everyone's like, man, I'm not. Why is this guy treating me like this? There's no reason for him to talk like this. There's no. And it's just like you don't understand. That's somebody who has all the answers. So I'm going to do it. I'm sorry, what were we saying? No, 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 you, you finished. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, so that was, you know, that was the guy who had all the answers for me at the time. So I, I shut up. I did everything I needed to do. Um, I was the first one at the gym, the last one to leave. Um, and I I just poured in everything what I needed to do to learn. And um, I would not be able, I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for uh, the guys that I named uh, Jacob, um, Dustin, um, Frank Monaco. He's a pro fighter. I'm, uh, I don't want to butcher his record. He's th either 3 0 or 4 0. Um, Ruben Hernandez, um, uh, and then my current coach, Jose Guzman, he's been with me throughout the amateurs. Yep. Um, he's with me now. He's my, my head coach. That guy is, is the best. You know, when you have someone like that in your corner, that extra boost of confidence sometimes is all you need. And he, he also trains a, a bunch of, uh, you know, real, real, uh, ascending pros as well. Yes. So it's uh, good to be around that. Exactly. So, and, and so you like it, you, you like this stuff so much. You actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yet you, you own the gym that you train at now. Yes, sir. The gym that we're actually in right now. Bread Bread winners. Winners. Yes, sir. So uh, talk about that. You, you said you're the first one in and the last one out. I think you have to be now because you're the one with the key, right? That's true. That's <laughs> true. Um, so now, actually, I do have a, 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 some coaches who um, are so dedicated that they're here before me some hours and, and even training after me. But uh, yeah, but that's pretty much the case, though. 
Um, Breadwinners came about in COVID actually. So once COVID happened, um, I was I went from sleeping in the gyms, being homeless, like I mentioned earlier, to um, taking over the gym. I was the head coach at the previous gym that I was working for. And um, I wanted to begin my fighting career. And then COVID happened, put a damper on everything, obviously stopped everybody's plans. And then um, I didn't know what I was going to do because we were all laid off from COVID. And I'm like, shoot, I got to go back home. I'm not going to be able to stay in the city. And then I had clients that were like, hey, like, you know, you should start something. And uh, I was like, yeah, but who am I? Who am I? I? I could never start something. And the group of guys, my, my, uh, the ones that I already named already, as well as a couple of the clients that I had were, were they were the reason why Breadwinners became a thing. Um, I didn't believe in myself to own a gym. And they were like, why not? Do it. And uh you know, like I said, my support team that I have around me, we opened up the gym in March of 2021 while COVID was definitely still a thing. And um, we have been crushing it. We do no paid marketing. Everything's word of mouth. And we're opening up our second location. So oh, wow. we've been doing, we've been doing pretty well. And, and, and this is a gym, you, you, a gym, you know, it, it, it tends to high end club, Wall Street guys, a lot of, you know, guys who are, you know, um, you know, white, white collar, um, you know, real professional uh, people. I mean, you, you, you have any pros in there beside yourself? Yes. So I was, okay. you're 110 percent right. We, 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 we appeal to all of those guys, Wall Street, high end clients. And we also appeal to uh, ev- the entire spectrum. We, we appeal mm-hmm. to everybody. We are not just a gym for people who want to come in and just throw some punches. We're a community. Um, yeah. We have a bunch of fighters that we've all created like in here um, that are doing big things. Um, one of which Cindy Wang, she just won ringmasters at 110. Um, she oh, wow. trains with uh, myself, Ruben, uh, Frankie. Um, we got Tiffany Yu. She's fighting. She's making, um, she, she's doing her thing. Uh, we had her at a different weight class, so we just moved her into a weight class that's definitely better suited for her. We're excited for her to get in the ring. We have Mickey uh, and Jair Bernier. Um, they're twins. Uh, Mickey is 7-1 and one with, with six knockouts. Uh, Jair is 2-0 and oh with two knockouts. Uh, yeah, so we've been, we've, been, we've been taking the fight scene by storm. And uh, got myself to just turn pro. Uh, Jacob Sol- uh, Solis, he's 6-0 and oh that I mentioned. Or 5-0, yep. oh, I'm sorry, five knockouts. Uh, Frank Monaco is professional out of here. Um, we also have a bunch of pros that come in and out of here for sparring. Uh, Mio Yoshida coming in and getting work with uh, um, Tiffany and Cindy. So we have it's a it's a one stop shop. You're gonna come here, and if you're looking to learn how to box, but never ever ever have to get punched in the face, this is the gym for you. If you do want to try, you know, your luck in the ring and seeing if fighting's for you, this is the gym for you. If you're looking for a, a great workout and you're like, listen, I just want to come get a great workout, this is also the gym for you. You're going to get one-on-one type of tension that's going to make sure that you're learning the craft the right way, no matter what. So also, that, that's yeah, a little bit about your background. So Tuesday night, a guy by the name of Mike Diorio is going to be standing across the ring from, from you. Uh, yes, what is. do you know about him? He's a veteran guy. He doesn't have the greatest record, but a veteran guy uh, who's been who's been in there. Did, did tell us what your thoughts on him. Have you looked him up? Have you watched any film on him? And uh, talk about uh, what you expect from him on Tuesday night in Nashville. Yes. Uh, so I don't know much about him. I was able to look him up and see a couple of his fights, uh, most of them being MMA fights. Um, the guy's definitely a, a, a tough, tough opponent. He's somebody who doesn't come to just lay down. He's somebody who's in there and he's he's going to look to get his job done. Um, he's only been stopped twice. So out of all those fights, you know, he's he's durable. He's been in there with some guys who are, are pretty good, um, one of which I know Price Taylor. He's he's a monster. Um, I got to share some rounds yeah, with him sparring and I've seen yeah. firsthand. Yeah, I've seen firsthand how good Price is. Um, giving him all the flowers. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you go, you go. I, I oh. keep, I, I just, I, when I think of questions, I, I think yeah. of what about the finish. No, that's fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm excited. I think uh, he's going to come ready to fight. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. I don't want nobody who's going to go in there and lay down. I want to showcase what I've been working. I, it's been a while since I've been in the ring. It's been uh, approaching a year. And I got, I got some aggression I need to let out for, <laughs> for the time that I spent out, out of the ring. So unfortunately, like you said, he's going to be standing across from me. So, 
That actually kind of segued into my question. I'm like, without giving too much away, too much of uh, your what, what's your style? I mean, uh, it sounds like you want to come forward on Tuesday. Night. You, you you may want to be sounds like you want to be shot out of a cannon on 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 uh, on Tuesday. Night. But is is that you? you? You're more of a boxer. You're more of a puncher. You do a little little bit of everything. That's that's the best way to put it. I uh, I'm still developing my style, um, and. I, I think that that's a beautiful thing because of the arsenal that I have. I'm extremely athletic for the heavyweight division. So if the fight requires me to stay on my toes and move around, let's do it. Um, I'm also, I pack a punch. They call me the hammer for a bunch of different reasons. Mm -hmm. And one of them is because the power that I, I pack in my punch. So if you want to sit down and bang, I welcome, I welcome all of the challenges. Uh, I think yeah. that I have an arsenal that is, is very broad something that's not exactly easy to showcase in the amateurs. So this is this is my time to shine. I'm I'm so excited about this opportunity to showcase everything in my bag, to use my defense, use the ring, um, use my power to oppose my will, to, to stalk my opponent when I want to, to create the space when I want to, and just literally dominate in every single aspect. Even though this is your pro debut, you're no stranger to country box. You came down earlier in the year with, with you mentioned Jacob uh, Solis. Uh, uh, what was the experience like uh, watching the fights at the Troubadour? So I'm going to be honest with you. When I was headed down there, I didn't know what to expect. I was like, great, I'm going down to support my, my boy Jacob. It's going to be another day at the office. And I remember I met uh, Mr. Jimmy Adams and just being around that entire environment, I turned to Jose actually and I was like, I need to fight in Nashville. I need to come here. I need to be a part of this. This is something that I want. And it's funny because Mr. Adams, he could tell. He looked at me and he was like, I'll see you soon. <laughs> so it, this this was something that uh, once I went down there, I knew that this was this was going to be the case. Finally, uh, a couple real quick ones. Uh, where, where do we find you on the social media? Oh, you can find me at um, on Instagram. It's at underscore Josh Popper. And um, that's the only social media I have. I have a TikTok, but I don't I don't use that thing. It's too much. But yeah, too follow much. me on Instagram um, and show all the love. And, and you guys know where to find the tickets and the stream. Trust me, you guys will not be disappointed. Come check USA, it out. Fireworks. USA Today Sports, Troller TV, a uh, couple of um, YouTube pages. It'll be on Country Box on YouTube and all over the place. So you can't miss it. What do you want to say to the fans in closing before we see you two tonight? Down at the Troubadour, Nashville, Tennessee. I want you guys to know to have your popcorn ready. I'm going to put on a show for you guys and show you what this anticipation has been about. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. And now you guys finally gave me the opportunity. It's go time. There you have it. It's going to be go time on Tuesday night for Josh Popper in New York City. Uh, how about one last fight? Did you uh, – because uh, I go to a lot of the fights up there in New York. Do you hang out the fights, in, like the fights at the Garden, fights in Barclays Center? You, are you, do we see you ringside there? Of course. Um, I, I love to I love to make uh, any kind of appearance I can around any boxing venues, whether that be amateurs or professionals. Um, yeah, just, you know, with my schedule, being a business owner and all that, sometimes a little bit harder to get to the fights. I was actually supposed to go to um, a Wait, nice. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Did the fight tonight at the Garden? Yes. So um, trying to figure out how that can work with my schedule, because. I'm going to be traveling for a little bit over the next week for obvious reasons. So yeah. got to squeeze in some clientele. Well, there you have it, Josh Popper. Thank you for a few minutes of your time. We look forward to seeing you, you. this Tuesday night live at the Troubadour Nashville, Tennessee. We'll see you on Tuesday. Yes, sir. It's hammer Thank time.